Hello, my name is Clive Scott and this is the first of a series of lectures I've called Technical Lectures on Java and it covers primitive types and literals. OK, for the benefit of people who already know what these terms mean, uh, this is what I'm going to cover. This lot down here. Um, and uh, I will in fact go into quite a lot of detail, so um, I won't cover a, a lot of Java, but I will. Um, there won't be anything left more that you can really add to what I'm going to say about. So. Uh, let's get started. Right, uh, let's talk about uh, variables. Um, now a variable in a programming language is um, basically a, um, a named location somewhere in memory which can hold a value. And um, in Java you have to um, declare it basically before you can actually use it. And um, all variables have got a, a type of some sort. Um, and what this type does is, is it limits what you can do to that variable and um, it, uh, it controls the meaning of any operations that you do on that variable and um, the result of expressions are, are also a type as well and um, types occur in two forms there's um, primitive types and there's reference types and what I'm going to discuss is primitive types there's also something called a null type but that doesn't have a name actually That's, um, a bit um, weird, it's just put in there to make the semantics work out. Okay, now the best thing to do is probably look at an example to make it a bit clearer. Right, this is just a very simple program I've uh, put together to illustrate primitive types and literals and um, variables and um, how you set them and things. And uh, basically, what's going on here. Uh, there'll be a lot on here that um, you won't understand, but um, don't worry about that. We will get to everything sooner or later. Uh, right, so first of all, um, what's going on here is um, I've declared a variable which I've called i. I'm using just single letters for most of these because if I use long words, um, it doesn't get captured on the screen very easily, so I've just truncated them all to single letters. Uh, this variable i, and um, it's of type that's the type of it, that's integer and I'll set it to the value 1, 2, 3 here's um, a variable called D which is of type double and um, I haven't set it at all there because you don't have to do it straight away and just uh, just for a change I've set it down here instead just to illustrate that this is type, this is uh, boolean and the variable is called bool and I've set it to false um, this is um, F that's the name of the variable and it's of type float and I'll set it to 2.718281 and that little f at the end is important we'll come to all this later and uh, here just to illustrate is um, a comment if you put two slashes in like that everything from that point onwards is to the end of the line is a comment and you can put anything you want and it's just ignored so you can document using that method. There's another method as well which I'll also come to. Now what happens is um, uh, programs always start it, uh, start it main and um, uh, statements get executed one at a time just down here and uh, statements are terminated with a semicolon and um, what happens is so that log gets executed and down here we're printing stuff out and this will print out hello world and then this next line will contain int i equals and the value of i and double d equals and the value of d and so on. Uh, so it, as I say it's just about the simplest program I could come up with but as I say there is still stuff on there which will take a bit of explaining uh, but we'll get to that sooner or later. Okay so before you can actually run it um, it's been typed into a file which is called test.java and before you can actually run it, you have to compile it. And um, let's just illustrate that. Right, I hope you can see that. This is um, so you compile it. Um, it has to be passed to something called the Java compiler. You have to compile it before you can run it. Um, and uh, that's what uh, JavaC is. That's the Java compiler. You, you give it the name of the file and um, capital letters and things are quite important in Java, so you have to be careful about that. Don't matter much in Windows, but uh, in Java. And um, this is going to compile it, which we'll do now. I'll take one second. 
and uh, now we're um, I we just run it which uh, means you write Java and then the name of it and that calls the Java virtual machine and passes it the name there and there you go that prints exactly what you want um, what I'm doing here is doing it all from the command line there's a development environment but um, uh, things which take place are a bit more transparent if you see it on the command line so that's why I'm using this rather than the development environment plus of course it makes these um, these video files a lot smaller if I don't use the development environment I can cut down the size so that's another reason so um, there's plenty of videos out there which describe the development environment if you're interested but uh, let's get on now and take a look at uh, these literals and stuff in some detail uh, right there are eight different primitive types and um, they're called primitive because they're used in the building of more complicated types and um, I divided these up into three categories there's the um, integral types which hold uh, just whole numbers um, floating point types and there's a boolean type right now the um, byte which is the first one on this list is uh, as you might expect it holds from minus 128 up to 127 and it's 8 bits wide just what you'd expect really and um, there's one I want to draw your attention to down here which is um, char char is used to hold a point in the basic multilingual plane and it ranges from 0 up to 65535 it's unsigned therefore and um, uh, this notation here is um, like um, it's got a Unicode escape sequence and it's uh, very similar to the way that Unicode points are specified in the Unicode spec so it's um, uh, basically minus uh, backslash u followed by four hex digits to represent the point in the basic multilingual plane and um, the important thing about this is that in fact it's um, it's really an integer okay so it's um, 16 bits and it's uh, similar therefore to short except the short is signed so there is some overlap between the two but they're not the same right now floating point um, there are two types of floating point there's the float and the double which represents single and double precision that's 32 and 64 bits now there's also something which is called floating extended exponent and double extended exponent um, right now uh, these are used if anywhere in, to hold sort of intermediate results of calculations and expressions and stuff so they're and also they're not actually a requirement of the language itself so uh, they're an optional part so I don't think I'll say too much about them you can turn this facility off if you want to by specifying that this, some, whatever the calculation is in, should be in strict floating point and that will turn off this facility um, can I say oh yeah the um, the float itself it is is um, the only difference between that and, and the extended exponent version is that as you might expect the exponent part has been enlarged to um, enable it to hold a wider range of values so that's the basic difference so a float can be represented exactly in an, a floating extended exponent um, it's just that um, it, sometimes that preserves accuracy in intermediate results of calculations so I don't think I'll say too much about that because it's an uh, entirely optional bit of the language uh, lastly there's uh, the boolean type and that can just hold either true or false now in particular the size of a boolean is not specified so the whoever implements the language and the virtual machine and stuff is is free to decide whatever size is most appropriate I presume so uh, right also um, note you note that the boolean is, is not an integral type now some languages that's not the case but in Java it is the case it's a completely separate type you can't treat it as an integer so just something to bear in mind 